So my name is Farmer Bill, and we farm at Ivory Silo Farm in Westport. And we grow lots of different vegetables and flowers and herbs and fruit, but one thing we love growing on the farm is seeds. We grow lots and lots of seeds on the farm. We love to grow seeds on the farm because we see seeds as the heart and soul of everything that we grow on the farm. And so what we do with these seeds is we don't just plant them, we care for them and we save them year after year after year. And the seeds get to know their place. They know the weather that we have, they know the pests and diseases, they know the way that we farm and the seeds adapt. And this is what humans have done for thousands and thousands of years. So we decided we would build an entire farm around seed. I got into farming because I realized that I was somebody who needed to move to think. And I always had a hard time sitting in a desk or being indoors for too long. I always wanted to be outside, playing in the woods, getting my hands dirty, dirt under my fingernails, and being in the garden. And I gardened with my parents when I was very young, and we, we loved to garden as a family together. So that's kind of what got me excited about gardening. And then when I realized I could do it uh, as a job, I thought this is the coolest thing I could ever do. I can grow food for my community and for my family, and I can work outside all the time and I can eat delicious food that's really, really good for me and share that with people. So that's what got me really inspired to go farm as a profession. And when I started farming and I was holding these handfuls of seeds as we were planting seeds early in the spring, I said, these are like a handful of tiny miracles that this one tomato seed can feed my entire family and produce hundreds and hundreds of seeds. And that's when I said, I'd like to try saving seeds myself. And maybe if I start saving seeds, I'll grow better and better plants by doing that. So celeriac is a crop that there are not very many different varieties available for growers to grow. So we took it upon ourselves to go to all the seed banks in the US and take out different varieties and grow them and see how they do in the Northeast. And now we can select the best varieties. There are some tags right here that they have different numbers and we get to see how they grow and whichever ones do really well, we can save over winter and replant next year for seed. What breeding of plants means is what humans have done for 12,000 years, which is selecting the best plants for flavor, for vigor, meaning how well they grow, for disease resistance, and for ability to do what we want them to do in a garden setting. So stuff that may grow really well in the Southwest or in California won't grow as well in Massachusetts necessarily. So when we're doing breeding here, we're growing plants in the Northeast, in Massachusetts, in our gardens and farms, and we're watching them and seeing what they do and we're selecting the best plants. This is what humans have done for thousands and thousands of years, is they've grown food and they've gone out and picked the best plants to save for seed the next year. And so you have an amazing relationship with plants this way because you plant the seed, you watch the plant go, grow, and then you select the best plants for next year. And every single year you're seeing the effort of your work over and over and over again as the plants get better and better and better. They're more adapted, they're delicious, they're growing really, really well. You don't need to use a lot of fertilizers or put a lot of energy into growing them if it's going well. So that's basically what breeding is, is just selecting the best of the best. Looking at things like what the leaves are doing, what insects are eating and not eating, because you can actually select for insect resistance. You can look at the plants that are not getting chomped by beetles and say, wow, these plants have their own natural resistance. So we can breed a plant that's beetle resistant even. So as we're walking down, we can see lots of different types of celeriac. This is what a celeriac root looks like. This is a very, very small one. This is the part that people eat. So when we're looking through all these different celeriac, at the end of the day, we want them to be able to make a nice little root like that. Most people cut them up and put them in stews. Anything that you'd use celery in. They're delicious in soups. That's one of my favorite ways to use them. But you can even make fries out of them. Some people make celeriac fries. They'll peel off all the skin, cut the white flesh into little rectangles, and just fry them up in the oven or bake them in the oven. We heard from farmer friends that there was a great need for a flint corn, a dry corn that can be ripe earlier than the flint corns that we have now. 
and that can produce two ears instead of one per plant, so it has a higher yield. It's a wonderful corn to grow, but it's a very long season corn. So people in New Hampshire or Maine or other areas of the Northeast can't grow that corn because it doesn't ripen in time. So we recognized that there was a need for a corn that can be riper sooner in the season. And so we took a couple different varieties of flint corn and we let them pollinate, which is why you can see here, there are some stalks that are tall. There's some that are a little shorter. Some have red tinges to them. Some still have green. And this is a corn that's used for cornmeal, for polenta, and for grits, and for cornbread, and for the famous Johnny Cakes. So what happens once we've saved our early ear of corn? Well, we twist all these corn kernels off because each one of these corn kernels is a seed. And this will grow probably about 200 corn plants just from this one ear. And so when we pick the earliest ones and we put those early ears aside and we take all the seeds off it, we plant those seeds next year. And we plant those seeds next year, we select again for the earliest plants and save those seeds. And every year we're selecting, we're making the corn a little bit earlier, and a little bit earlier, and a little bit earlier, until you have a corn that ripens a couple weeks earlier than the corn we started with. And that's basically what breeding is. It's just selecting the things you want and cooperating with the plants. This is the corn. Once we've taken the corn off this, either shelling by hand or using a sheller, this is what we get. You can see that there are little pieces of corn stalk in there and some silks and some chaff. And if I just do this, you can see how it blows in the wind. So this is called winnowing. And you can do it just with the air, dumping it from bin to bin. Or you can use a box fan. Or you can use a fancy machine that we have called the Winnow Wizard, which separates not just the dust and the chaff and these little silks and stuff pieces of the plant that aren't the seeds, but it also can separate good seed from not good seed by weight. You can see the difference between these two seeds. This seed has lots of energy and is really ready to grow. This one may have some energy in it, but it may not put out a very strong seedling when it germinates. So when we are able to separate the seeds by weight, the heaviest seed is the best seed because they're nice plump seed kernels that have lots of energy to grow next year. So this is a very, very special bean. It's a beautiful bean. A friend of ours gave us this bean in a packet of seeds and there were only six seeds in the packet. And only three of them germinated, which means we only had three plants to start. And in just two years, we filled the bucket up this much just by growing the seed out. And this is a seed that was the seed of the Piscataway tribe in what is now Maryland and Pennsylvania. And this seed is going back to the tribe this year so they can grow their ancestral bean that had disappeared from the tribe and gone through a series of seed swaps and powwows and became rare and hard to find. And with three beans, we were able to grow out enough to bring it back and they can grow their ancestral bean once again. There are two ways that we start seeds on the farm. We either direct sow, which means we put the seeds right in the ground, or we grow them in trays like these so we can transplant them out as little seedlings, which I think a lot of you are doing in your gardens. And when they're just ready with their root systems, you take out the plant and we can stick the plant right in the ground and it gets a head start on the year. So things that need lots of warmth, more warmth than maybe we have here, like tomatoes or peppers, or things that we want to start really, really early so we have early greens, we would grow in trays like these and we would transplant them. These are some of the seeds we grow on the farm that we don't eat, that aren't from food crops. This is a type of goldenrod that you can see is just finishing flowering and starting to turn white and brown and make teeny tiny seeds. And these are really important because these are a major source of nectar and pollen for pollinators. So we're growing these here and we're saving the seeds so that we can share the seeds with other farmers and other people who are planting out habitat for bees and wasps and butterflies and teeny tiny flies and all sorts of pollinators who need plants like these to have forage to eat all year round. So this is called a drum thresher. And a friend of ours made this by finding an extra cycle in a dumpster, getting some wood and just a few pieces of hardware like these hinges 
and built this amazing thresher. And what a thresher is, is something that separates seed from the pods. So if you imagine having big dry pods of beans, you would put it inside here. All these little pieces of wood in here are called flails. And when I step on the pedal, they spin around really fast inside the thresher. And they just whap those beans right out of the pods. And then there's a screen underneath right here. And that screen catches all the pieces of bean pod, lets the beans fall through into a bin right here. So we can clean seeds by putting sometimes whole plants or just pods of beans into here. And somebody sits on the bicycle and rides the bicycle really fast. And these flails just whap all the plant material and knock the seeds right out of them. And then when that's threshed, when the seed is separated from the pods, we would take our seed with all the little pieces of plant material and chaff and stuff that's left in them, and we would bring it over to our winnower. And a winnower is something that blows all those pieces of chaff and everything out and leaves clean seed. So what we have right here is some okra seed. And you can see this stuff here is the chaff. Those are pieces of the pod and even little pieces of stem that are lighter than the seed. So we're gonna run this through our fancy winnow wizard. We can clean lots of different types of seeds on this machine. So this is a lot easier to use than a box fan for all the different types of seeds that we grow. So on the top, there is this piece called a hopper. And that's where the seed goes into. And it's gonna drop from this hopper onto this little vibrating gravity table and the seeds are gonna travel down this table and they're gonna drop in front of here. Right here, there's air blowing out from a big circulation fan on the back of it. There's a big blower fan right here. The blower fan blows through this machine and based on what size screens we have inside the machine, these right here, there's more or less air. So all it is is a blower fan and some screens. And you can use that to clean any type of material. So now I'm gonna turn it on and we can see how it works. Take my seed and my chaff, and I'm gonna pour it into the hopper. The seed we just cleaned is okra seed. And this is a very special type of okra because this one starts flowering really, really early when it's very small and keeps making fruit all throughout the season. So this one grows really well in the north where we don't have as much heat as in the southern United States. So it's a really good variety of okra to grow if you wanna have a lot of okra, but you don't wanna wait for a really long, hot season to actually get the okra. So we are very fortunate that we live in an area where there are lots of farms. And so even if you don't have a garden or farm to grow in, you can always go and ask a farmer if you can come see their farm or if you can help out and get involved that way and learn how your food is grown. Because once you learn how to grow food, you can take that anywhere in the world with you and you'll always be able to eat and feed yourself and feed your family. It's a really exciting time to learn how to grow food and it's a really exciting time to learn how to save seeds because people are remembering that seed saving is super important. It's what humans have done for such a long, long time. And now we're all coming back to it and we can make food for generations to come and not just save seeds that were being grown for hundreds or thousands of years. We can create whole new varieties of seeds plants and vegetables and stuff that people have never seen before because all we have to do is get to know the plants and learn how to save their seeds and everything else follows from that.